Well, welcome back to our Yankees podcast. Pete Caldera here in New York. Mike Stanton, three-time world championship Yankees reliever uh, in the Houston studios. And uh, Mike, uh, Aaron Judge spoke uh, on the record about his uh, injury uh, this past weekend. And, uh, you know, trying to get some clarity on this. I, you know, I, I think he's trying to be as honest as he can within the parameters of of uh, what he's dealing with, what the club right. – you know, kind of wants uh, where they want this. Listen, we still really don't know. We're kind of in the dark about this, um, about where where the end game is, you know, which is when he's coming back. We can only speculate still. They won't give any timetables. Judge certainly isn't uh, going to throw a timetable out there. But, you know, we, we did get some clues. Uh, you know, he did mention for the first time that he's dealing with a, a torn ligament in his right big toe. Um, he wants to start uh, – you know, testing a little more uh, by hitting dry swings and and throwing, but he's dealing with uh, you know this is his push off uh, right back toe. That's you know that you know for a power hitting right handed hitter for for anybody really you know that that's uh, a, a righty. That's uh, that's the that's the foot you push off on, and this is uh, you know this is an injury that uh, you know we we still have a lot of mystery about, Mike. And I'm just uh, wondering what you feel about uh, what he. His comments were, and uh, I mean, just reading between the tea leaves, you know, he basically said, don't expect me back in uh, the next two weeks, certainly. But so this could be something that, that goes beyond the All-Star break. Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt it's going beyond the All-Star break. I mean, we're talking about uh, the same situation with no time frame, and we're three weeks into this. Yeah. So it's it's going to be one of those situations. He's going to be gone for a while now. Um you know, yes, this is the first time he's actually told us exactly what the issue is or part of the issue with the ligament being torn. Um, you know, he didn't say anything about the possibility of surgery, if it needs surgery. Uh, yeah, we are still in the dark. You know, they also didn't talk about if he wants to start testing it, maybe it's a situation that it can't really get worse. But you know, if he can deal with the pain and just deal with the symptoms, maybe he right. can play on it. So we really don't know exactly what's going to go on here. And, and like you said, he has been very explicit about making sure that there has been no time frame. Um, and, you know, so we have to wait and see, you know, really where it, where we end up here, but it's not going to be anytime soon. Uh, just simply because, I mean, heck, he's it's you know he's he's pushing four weeks now that he hasn't played three and a half weeks, whatever it is. Yeah, you know, so and he hasn't been on his feet. You know, right. he hasn't been hitting. He hasn't been doing other things. So there's there's a uh, there's that aspect of it also. So this is um this is kind of worst case scenario, other than just saying okay, he's not here for the rest of the season. Yeah, he, this happened on June third in Los Angeles, uh, making a catch at Dodger Stadium, where he uh, he, he ran into the uh, the unpadded concrete part of the base of the wall there, right. uh, by the bullpen door, you know, full at full force, um, you know, uh, just to 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 backtrack here to read some of his quotes, what he told us uh, the other day on the third week anniversary of this. He said, there's no need for timetables. He's still in pain. Uh, he said, I've had injuries, different injuries over the years, where it's going to take a while. It's not going to be perfect here in a couple of weeks. Once we can manage the pain, we're going to be in a good spot. Now, he's had two platelet-rich plasma injections. Um, the second one uh, was about two weeks ago, 10 days, two weeks ago. Yeah. He suggested that once – once he gets closer to getting onto the field that, uh, you know, probably he'll, he'll take a cortisone shot to deal with the, uh, you know, whatever the lingering remaining pain is there. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, you, as we said, you're, you're dealing with an injury, you're dealing with it with a torn ligament that has to repair itself. I mean, this is just going to take time. Um, I, I think, you know, knowing judge, um, you know, he'd be out there sooner than, than, than later. I'm sure he can, he he's managed pain before he can deal with that aspect, but this is still an injury you have to heal, and and you don't want to work it. And I I don't know if we're comparing apples to oranges here, Mike, with DJ Lemayhu's situation last year, but he was dealing with a with a right big toe, uh, uh, right foot injury last year that uh, that really wrecked his entire second half, and he wasn't yeah. available in the postseason. So you don't want to get it to the point where if if you're on it and you shouldn't be, and it gets worse. And now you're you're unavailable for the rest of the season. 
Well, I mean, think about it this way. You know, ligaments, as far as I know, now I'm not a doctor, but I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night, <laughs> uh, that ligaments don't repair themselves. Right. I mean, that's why you have a Tommy John. When you blow out a UCL, you have to have, uh, you have to have surgery. And I know it, this has not been brought up, but, you know, that's, that, that's got to be in the card somewhere. But maybe this is a situation because he's talking about managing the pain, taking a cortisone shot. Maybe that's not on the on the table right now, but that's something that could be addressed in the off season. And then you just put up with the symptoms and any kind of pain that you have and try and, you know, milk it through the regular season. Um, yeah. It's it's I, I can't imagine how much pain he is in, but we do know Aaron Judge, if he's not on the field, there's a substantial amount of pain. I mean, there's yeah. there's something there with, with to say the least. So, yeah. Uh, again, I don't think this is going to be something that is is going. He, I, I think that this really. It sounds like this is something that he is going to deal with for the rest of the season. It's just going to be a matter of can he, you know, can he run? Can he do the things he needs to do? You know, can he, you know, the 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 the, the toe on the back foot? You know, that's a that's a that's a that's a big part of his swing. We'll just have to wait and see. But uh, we do know that if he can get out there, he will be out there. Yeah. Just a quote from him again uh, from what he told us the other day. Uh, if I can run, I'd be out there playing defense, doing my thing, and we'd figure out hitting. Um, and, uh, you know, this – I want to be out there with the guys for the good times and the bad, so it's it's tough sitting back and watching. This team is uh, – as we do this podcast, are, uh, they, they've – uh, their record is eight and ten without him in their lineup since yeah. uh, since he's been on the shelf. Um, obviously, an, an irreplaceable uh, you know guy in their lineup. You know they've they've gotten uh, you know good production out of uh, left-handed corner uh, outfielders Jake Bowers and and Billy McKinney, two guys who were non-roster uh, players when they began the season. Another guy that uh, was a left-handed hitting uh, DH corner outfielder Willie Willie Calhoun. Mm -hmm. Who is actually, uh, you know, paying some dividends for them is is now on the shelf uh, himself with a, with a quad injury that's going to probably put him out for the next four or five weeks. So, you know, uh, they're still kind of patching the tire, piecing it together. You know, as we said, you can't replace Judge; it's just impossible. Um, you, you wonder if they're in the market for an outfielder now that uh, you know we get down to four or five weeks uh, towards the the trade deadline too. Here, I it, I would think they'd have to at least kick the tires on the idea. You know, see yep. if there's someone out there that they can get for the right price uh, to get a few at bats because, uh, you know, like I said, Judge just doesn't seem like he's going to be out there anytime soon. And the the other side of this is, <clears throat> you know, in a situation like this, you know, somebody has to pick things up. Well, they really haven't had that. They really haven't yeah. had somebody. I mean, you're talking about an offense that's in the bottom third of the league. Yes, the New York Yankees has an offense in the bottom third of the league. And, and, um, I mean, as good as the pitching staff is, uh, you know, Garrett Cole can't do it all. He can't pitch every single day. And, you know, there are times that the pitchers have to pick up the hitters and vice versa, but it just really seems like right now this offense is 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 really hurting without Judge in the middle. Yeah. Uh, LeMayhew, Rizzo is starting to pick it up a little bit. You know, John Carlos Stanton certainly is the, becomes the, the, the key – figure in that that lineup uh, certainly without without judge and uh and not getting production uh, out, of, out of a guy that you they they anticipate you right. know that they, they would get uh some out of now that uh that also kind of segues us into the josh donaldson situation he you know sat out a, a string of games here that were not in the line because of uh, a manager's decision frankly um and now uh you know donaldson made a point to uh to talk to Aaron Boone about his playing time situation. Um, you know, frankly, we could be running into a, you know, we could be getting into Aaron Hicks territory here soon where uh, if you're not playing, you're, you're essentially, uh, you know, a, an overpriced veteran uh, where if they have other options, they'll, they're going to them. Uh, and then, um, <laughs> you know, you, you just cut bait. Uh, you, you become a DFA candidate. Now, I don't know if we're, we're there yet, uh, certainly Donaldson defense is a, is a factor here. He's, you know, he plays a gold glove caliber third base at 37 years old, 
but he's not being paid uh, $20 million uh, to play defense. They need him to be a, a central figure in the lineup. And now, now here's the, you know, the, I, I guess the, the catch 22 of all this Boone is on the record saying, yeah, we want to get him unlocked. We want to get him back, but if he's not in the lineup, how do you do it? Um, I, <laughs> yeah, I, it's a double-edged sword. Right. It is. And, and it's a situation that, you know, the difference between him and Aaron Hicks was Aaron wasn't playing. I mean, he wasn't playing at all. And so how is he ever going to get on, you know, on the uphill side of this? Um, it just wasn't going to happen. And Aaron Hicks has, I mean, just done an incredible job since uh, since leaving the Yankees. But um, and I do think that, you know, he's going to cool back off. You know, everything that's happened in New York, that doesn't just go away. The issues that he had, he's gotten hot. But Josh Donaldson on the other side, he has gotten opportunities. Yeah, the yeah. last couple of days he hadn't played, but he has, you know, he has had plenty of at bats, and he just simply isn't getting it done. You know, especially in a situation, you know, if if Judge is back in there and they're scoring runs, okay, maybe you can take just the defense. But that's not the situation here. The situation is this team needs the offense. You know, they yeah. need help. Uh, you know, at the plate, swinging the bat, scoring runs, and and that so that just amplifies the issue that Josh Donaldson has had. And we've talked about this before. We talked about this all the way back in the offseason, you know, when we when, you know, doing this podcast. And, you know, we talked about – I don't think Josh Donaldson is going to be a very good bench player. I don't think – you know, right. I don't know if he's got the personality to uh, to kind of put the team first and sit there and and watch the team and, and you know, be a good – you know, be a good teammate. Not saying he's not a good teammate. I just don't think he's got the personality to sit on the bench and watch. Right. Now, Isaiah kind of Falefa has has adjusted to that role and, he, and he's become suited for that. And and frankly, his his um, his, his defensive flexibility has has made him a, a better bench player. He, they can plug him into center field. They can plug him left field. He can play third base. So he can play shortstop in a pinch. Mm-hmm. Um, you're right. Donaldson's just a third baseman. Um, so if he's not playing there every day, um Right. If you've made the decision that he's not your everyday third baseman, now you've yeah. got to you've got to make the other hard decision. Do you just do you just cut bait at, at that point? Um, th- they have to give DJ LeMahieu playing time. If you're if you're locked in every day and they're healthy, Rizzo at first, Torres at, at, at second, uh, the rookie Volpe at, at short. Third base is the only other place uh you know where you can you know have some flexibility and right. um but but yes you're right donaldson you you would think uh in an ideal situation has got to play there every day and, and find it yeah and that's the only and to me that's the only way it's going to do it i i just don't see where the middle ground is whether you know he either has to play or something else has to be done i'm not going to say what needs to be done, but I just don't think he's a bench type player. And the right. difference between, you know, him and IKF is, you know, IKF isn't a former MVP. You know, right. he doesn't have that same personality uh, and and brashness that Josh Donaldson does. You know, that's one of the things that makes Josh good is the attitude in which he plays. Well, if he's not playing, the attitude is still there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Uh, and the other part of this, uh, you know, the, the 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 money part. I mean, the, he's still on the hook for, uh, you know, the, the remainder of that that twenty million dollar uh, contract this year. Yeah. Uh, there's an eight million dollar buyout next year. I mean, this was part of the reason that, uh, you know, when, when they made the, uh, the the trade to get IKF uh, and Ben Rortfit from uh, from Minnesota, they had to take on. Uh, the guaranteed money on Donaldson contract, which at that time was about fifty million dollars, and uh, right. yeah, that's uh, I mean that was the the price of doing business there in the in the trade that sent uh, Gary Sanchez and Gio Urshela to to Minnesota. But uh, yeah, I'm right at this point. Yes, he, he either he's either going to play there every day or or you just move on from there. Well, here's the thing: what is going to be the best for Josh Donaldson? What's going to be the best for the New York Yankees? You know, scoring runs. Josh Donaldson playing every day and performing, you know, and having some results. You know, if he if he can get back on the field and he can start producing, this is a moot point. There's 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 no reason to discuss this. He is the third baseman, but you know, we just haven't seen that uh, that consistent offense from Josh in quite a while. Right, and uh, right, and it, 
when you talk about offense and the Yankees and, uh, you know, and those guys, uh, you know, aren't playing to the back of their baseball cards, it's, it's, <laughs> it, it becomes kind of an untenable situation. It makes life difficult. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, uh, tack on that, that, uh, you know, they could be out with, without judge for, for several more weeks here. Uh, it's, uh, they, you know, they become a scrappy team now, I, I, I guess. Right. I mean, you would have won nothing game the other day. Uh, piece it together. The bullpen's been, been terrific. They're at least their, their starting pitching has been, uh, been, been good they could get Carlos Rodon back uh in, in a week to 10 days so at least things are looking up in that department but yeah uh, they were, the, the, the offense is not uh, uh living up to its billing well here's the thing I mean we've we've seen this team do this before I mean just a few yep. years ago uh I mean you know you had an all-star team on the IL the DL back then um and you had a bunch of guys that weren't even on the roster weren't even on the team and they're out there and they're getting it done so you know there's no reason to panic. There's still a lot of baseball to be played. Uh, you know, they still got a pretty good record. Um, you know, they're still in the hunt, but they got to figure something out. They need to. They need some. They need some runs to support that pitching staff. Yeah, yeah. It'll be an interesting road trip now. Yankees are off to Oakland and St. Louis, back home next week. And uh, as we tick closer to the trade deadline, it gets more interesting by the day. Thanks, Mike. It's been great. We'll see you next week. All right. Adios, folks. All right. Thanks for joining us.